Welcome back and many thanks for staying with us on the number one breakfast show in the country, Morning at NTV. I do have Dr. Miriam Matembe, the former Ethics and Integrity Minister. She's also the former woman MP Mbarara. She's also the chair of the board at the Citizens Coalition on Electoral Democracy. She's not alone. We also do have Charity Ahimbi Siwe. She is the executive director at the Citizens Coalition on Electoral Democracy. Now, a very good morning, Dr. Matembe. Good morning to you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. Mm -hmm. um, good morning, listeners. I, as I was contemplating Indeed. and thinking about yes. why I should come here in the morning Indeed. prior elections, I said, God, I want to thank you for calling me to say a word to Ugandans mm -hmm. as we go to these elections battle, as we go to this battle. Mm -hmm. That's my view Indeed. of these elections. Mm -hmm. And I said, God, Give me the words. Indeed. So let's take, you, let's take you back to 1995 when the, the 1995 constitution was ratified. A constitution that you authored plus 21 other people. Do you feel like since then there's been some development in the democracy in Uganda since 1995 when we ratified the 1995 constitution? In fact, the constitution was promulgated, mm. you know. Mm. That is the good word mm. for it. Mm. This is a constitution which took us five and a half years mm. to make. Because as a commissioner, one of the 21 member commission, or Dutch commission, we took four years traversing this country of Uganda, educating people, telling them, you know, enough is enough. We have never built Uganda. This is the time to build Uganda. And the constitution is a foundation on which Uganda will be built and flourish. And Ugandans embraced the exercise. And we came out with a report. Mm. And in 1994, the people, by the way, the people did some of the things they really emphasized. Mm. One was the term limit. The people themselves said, in order for Uganda to move forward on this good foundation we are going to make, we must limit the term of the president. We said, why not limit the term? of other parliamentarians and so on. Mm -hmm. They said, no, it is the president who has the army, who has the money, who has everything, whom we cannot remove by vote. Therefore, the experience had shown that they couldn't. So they said, therefore, we want to limit the term of the president. And f two terms, five years mm -hmm. each. We said, what if you still love him? He said, we actually want to leave him to live when we still love him so much. Mm. So that was put in the constitution. The other thing that they talked about was previously the, the law was that the constitution is passed, the draft constitution is passed by the historicals and so on. The people of Uganda said no, now that we know what a constitution is, we would like to elect our own people to go and represent us and represent our views and make that constitution. That's when we shall feel that the constitution is ours. And so the Constituent Assembly 1994, which took one and a half years to discuss that constitution and passed it out in 1995. And I can assure you this constitution was widely acknowledged and acclaimed as the most beautiful constitution that was participatory made for Uganda to be built afresh. When you look at the, at the, what do you call it, the preamble of the constitution, mm. we were recording our past history, which was so sad, disappearance of the people, killing of the people, suffering of the people, poverty of the people. We want to leave it behind, mm. and we gave our constitution, mm. that constitution to leave the past behind. As I sit here, Hey, when we reach to the parliament, the, the CA, the, cons the people themselves in CA added another safety net. They endorsed the term limit and they added another uh, thing mm -hmm. of the age limit. They said, for instance, if I become a president when I was already like 70, surely by 75, I should have worked for this nation long enough mm -hmm. that I rest where other people can come in. You see, so we put that one also there. Mm. And we, we, the constitution was passed, and we said, now, when I received that constitution of Uganda, mm. you know, me, I was like Simon, this man in the Bible, who saw Jesus and said, God, 
you can take you are what you are you are servant mm. in peace because i said finally finally mm -hmm. here we are and i was looking at people who are educated who are enlightened we used to hear that because people are not educated blah, blah, but these were the educated people and we went and elected the new leadership in accordance with our constitution and i want to tell you that th that's why you say the sixth parliament was so strong. That's why if you go back and see what we achieved. Eh? But then the problem came in. And, and one thing I want to tell you before I even show you my disappointment mm -hmm. is that these people's view of term limit mm, and age limit was actually in conform it conformed to President Museveni's declaration mm -hmm. that the problem with Africa and in particular in Uganda is leaders who don't want to leave power peacefully. But here we are. We said, okay, we are with our president. He also wants to live peacefully, and we have put time for living peacefully. And therefore, we went into the field and started implementing this constitution. In, in the implementation of this constitution, mm -hmm. I think our president came to understand that the principle of separation of power, I think he knew, he wanted, he loved the constitution so much, I can testify, because I knew, I used to have a chat with him about this constitution, making the challenges we are facing, we would run him, he mm -hmm. orders people to raise money and we do. But it seems when the constitution started operating and sort of curtailed his powers, Mark, you originally, he was the president, he was the chairperson of the parliament, he was like everything. Now, after making the constitution, democratic, in democratic processes, mm -hmm. a constitution provides for separation of powers. So there was a separation of powers for executive, the, the limited powers because the parliament had its own powers. Mm -hmm. So when he tried to sort of work with the parliament and give orders and rules, and it said, no, we must follow the principle of separation of powers, then that is when the problem of leaving the constitution started. And as I talk now, as I talk now, there was now a battle between executive and the parliament, whereas each of them should have their own powers and complement one another in working out. That's how democracy works. But what I want to tell you, life. the constitution you are talking about is not the constitution we made. No. So it the removal of age limit and term limits watered down the whole And constitution. other things. Don't mm. think it is only the removal of age limit and term limit. Mm. There are other things, the restriction of, polit of people's rights and that kind of thing. So as I talk now, I talk here as a woman with such big disappointment, with maybe what I would call shattered hopes, but because my hopes are not in the worldly people, mm. my hope is in God. I cannot be shattered completely. I still have faith mm -hmm. that our God will lead us somewhere. Mm -hmm. But in the physical, in the physical, it is total disappointment when I see people disappearing. Remember, I'm, I'm coming back from Obote, from Amin. Mm -hmm. People disappearing, people beaten, people killed, brutality. And the difference here is that total brutality in the bread daylight, which has which traumatizes people. Dr. Kiza Besije contends that the government is acting this way because of the waning or reducing support that it's having. The more people lose faith in this government, it acts in the way it's acting, in a very, very harsh way. Could that be the reason? Because they are losing support, so they have to consolidate in their themselves in power. But what By intimidating I, people, arresting people. But uh, you know, you, because, it's mm. because you want to listen to words from one individual mm. like me, Matembe, mm. But I am telling you, if all Ugandans, all Ugandans has, Ugandans had a platform to come here and talk, eh? they would tell the president, please, president, please, please constrain yourself. You did well. You have done what you've done. You, you have served this nation. But there is always time for change. There is always time for change. I mean, what don't you see? For me, I call this, these electoral processes, I call them war. We are at a war. We are at a war. That's what I see. I have ever been here in this country. I'm 60 plus. We are at a war. 
because uh, you, when you 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 get all the, do you know what happens in the night all these soldiers who are on the way you go they want money they want they we are at a war and what about commercialization of politics what do you say about <laughs> it there's a lot of vote <laughs> buying according to the afro -Bum -Bum don't Supreme, say a lot 67 percent of the money was coming from the nrm and 33 percent was coming from the opposition don't let's talk about uh yes commercialization don't say of a politics. Lot. Mm. This I'm a candidate, by the way. I offered myself for, for elderly to represent the, the older people as the national woman representative for the older people. I went there to go and talk for the interest of old people. I knew about money. I knew I had left elective politics long ago. I didn't know I would manage them. First of all, I don't have money. Secondly, my integrity just compels me not to buy voters. Why should I buy voters if I want to offer my service? I want to go and represent them and serve them and take their interests at the highest level of decision making and influence decisions to take care of their interests. So why should I buy them? I should believe in my capacity and ability to go and represent them. So I would not buy them. But when I went, I didn't know. I didn't think at all that older people, 60 years and above, eh? these are former teachers, doctors, what, what. I didn't expect them to fall in that shameful category of people who say, Nzijamuchi, what do I get when I give you a vote? What do I get? I didn't expect that to happen. But I'm telling you, and I'm not saying all the older people know. But some I ring, some they say, so what are you giving us? So where is this? Where is water? Where is this? And I say, God, let me tell you, these elections is about, these elections is about money, money. The candidate I'm contesting with has been given 80 millions, 80 millions to contest with Nima Tembe, a person who had retired long ago, I have no money, I have no, no, no money to buy and I can't buy, but that is the money. She's going all over in the north where you are giving the money and so people say, so and so has given us this much, what will you give us? I say, is this elections? And some of them I tell them, I thought the law said that you should choose somebody to represent you in parliament to articulate on your interests. I didn't know, I don't know the law which is saying that you should get somebody who should buy you. Of course, they laugh mm. and we joke over it, but I'm telling the most important thing mm. that the government of Uganda, which has been here for the 35 years, has done, the most dangerous thing it has done is to destroy the moral fabric of Ugandans. I had never seen Ugandans beg this much. I, have, I was in politics for a good 20 years. I never paid anybody to get a vote. Never. I used to facilitate. Like if you have these, like they are border borders now. If he's, he, you say, okay, put in fuel, you drive, go and look for votes for me. Okay? That is facilitation. When you meet at a meeting to plan, you feed the people who, who you are planning with. Because they must eat and drink as you plan. But now buy, and people are buying and buying, and I want to condemn, I want to condemn in strongest terms, especially the elderly people who are buying the, the, the older people. Mm. And, and so the moral fabric of Ugandans is the most important challenge to any leader who comes forward. How will it be rebuilt? All right, Dr. Miriam Atembe, thank you very much for that, that submission. First of all, let's first go to uh, Ivan Walunyolo, who is in Entebbe, and then we shall get back uh, to this conversation. A very good morning, Ivan Walunyolo. What is the latest? In the streets of Abaita, Abadi, the Katavi Town Council in Wakiso District, we know, of course, it's now hours. We are counting down the hours to see that people head to the polls. But, of course, at such a time, I can tell you that all the streets, uh, the road uh, that goes to Entebbe and the other trading centers have been filled with the security to make sure that there is no any chaos that uh, can be registered in the area. But of course, all the parties, the presidential candidates, 
the members of parliament say they have done enough to see that tomorrow the people of Uganda will choose those ones that they think are the best to represent them. Well, unlike a few other instances from the information I'm getting that some opposition uh, contestants in Chigungu who have been arrested and now detained at the aviation police in Entebbe, we are yet to also get a clarification on what charges have been preferred against them. But from yesterday, of course, the Democratic Party came out to hold a press conference uh, saying that uh, contrary to what the Electoral Commission said, that after people casting their votes, should leave the polling area, they are saying that they will have to stay around and guard their votes up to the time when they, they will, of course, be counted. But well, we also know that yesterday the social media was shut down, and in that, many people were affected. And uh, here on the streets, I want to talk to some people who were affected from what happened, because the president came out in the night and said that uh, it was government's move following what he stated. But I want to talk to the people who were affected. Butia Okujako em kutu e jimugata bantu abantu we bako sedwa njaga kubanga njogera kono no muchara tujja kuumba umba tubuli rekota nkene linyalyo okujjako em mikutu e jimugata bantu chako seza chitia olunako rwego nerero Elinya nanjita anet kansalo muchara achikiri akata town council ngate yekisera che chimu ne simbye okuchipeto che chimu echizi buche twafunye kuno kulonda tetukula banga ko tetuma nyi chiche chiri mukulonda kwa lero abantu bali mukubona abo na social media ziziri wansi businesses ziza feziri bubi accounts sizo nazo nanzi gari te wali totale wali tuyinza kujja finances ezisobola okuyamba our families ebintu bena bena ezisobola tegeza mabade mujikosa business yes ezo social media sometimes zibade ku business baba munga abaina business zengo ye zemere zachi ko tubade trending ira businesses za fe but kuno kulonda kulese challenges nyingi nyo Tumade ne COVID, tumanyi tumuonye, ateka kati nukulonda kufuse chizibu. Uwe wale nyo kazi. Nyabo, elinyari okujia kwa social media, mikutu jimugata bantu, cha kwa seza chitia guengo muntu, tanikene elinyari? Elinyari, mirembe jakili ni chizito, umani kansala agendo bachi ikira katabi tauni kanso, nga tiketi ndiku ya umbrella. Mm, Sebo, mm. e chindi chino chitu kwa seza nyo nga fe, awa nunyi bovululu, owa wali musisti mwene yokubanga tulimu campaign, Tutuja aso wala kubanga, tuwa gerezi kanyane wa nafe, awali mbialo. Nisonga ya mune mama mba fawali mbialo. Kamo bero mani wa kajie, kutuja aso wala kusendinga sent, ya de kurisivinga kusimu. Kamo bero mani koka cha, liko eh, Facebook ne Whatsapp? Whatsapp ne Facebook, wazi jeko, elechi muku chutuko seza. Tutuja aso wala kubate, tumanyi luachi, echindu chino chitu use mbela weti. Tutuja aso wala kumanya bifude mguanga, kubanga bulikasele, wabi ya yongere mbele, yo chitegeza kubakutia sebo. Sebo elinyario nenge lije wako sedwa ngomu? Amanya anedobo ziba mchita umaru. Mm. Kakati nze atari nyomu nabi ya ufuzi na kosebwa. Banga emikutu jino jie mungata bantu. Nibade jitu yamba kukuliza baganda bafabali munseze weru joda niru dawa. Gata kabali mchaloga tosobo dege ndo kumanya ntima mbele lietia. Mm. Kati nafe chitu nize nyo, nyo bali tuyambie. Netu sigalako. Mm. Hey, mm. mm. Mukuru, okujia kwa emikutu jimugata wa ntu, chiku kwa sasa chitia? Mukuru, jimugata wa ntu, chiku kwa sasa chitia? Mukuru, jimugata wa ntu, jino jivada jara isi mungeri nti, nti usurote wa kesiri njio vitano, mm. nungula mbiza ana, mm. nungula mbiza ana, nungula mbiza ana, nungula mbiza ana, nungula mbiza ana, kusiri njizo meka, mm. vitano, naika jino no sistemi yu nawe ifa, mm. nafe kenyi tuwa tuko sivu, wale sunga ea tayi mwabeyi, ugateko mm. na vitu yale mungeri, mjovulamu, wachisegele anko. Mm. So, tuko sedula anga nyonga fefe, wale sunga tukore yake mbili mja fe, mm tuka sakani zake bintu bingi mm. so jina mikutu bigata bantu mtufu chitusiza nyo byo kubanga baji jeo tata kale kale ndoza yo mukuru engeli je wako sedwa ku bantu emikutu jimugata bantu baji je ko elinya elinya kadeluwa mm. nganze kubanga chanko seza muko kubanga twali jo kuno okubuliza kanyo bulunji naye kati nze nemirutu sibira banga ko kusinzira ko ene mbere eriwo baga mu muntu olino kubagira chintu chokola chito yagala mm. era mwenyine president ya ya shogera naye nange chinko seza muko Banga ngaze munanu, no kutu no kwa gire chuka chuka, kwa kusikuwa musangu, mdo no kwa chue, chue ya gala. Government ya kwa zivuji nyo kuja kwa mkutu. Wow, kari kari mkuru. Well, Romeo, those are some of the people here on the street of Avaita Wabili, just telling us how they've been, of course, affected with the shutdown of social media. It's the same thing, but of course, the president came out yesterday to clarify on what happened and why the move was taken. Well, of course, we know that uh, as we go for uh, these uh, polls, uh, people should keep calm. The security is, of, of course, deployed in different areas around Entebbe, but people should always remember that Uganda 
is what we love most. Among the amidst all these things, Uganda is what we should love most. This is Morning at 10 TV, and the Morning at 10 TV continues. I hand over back to you in the studio. A very good morning to you and our audience. A very good morning, Ivan Walanyololi is now linked to Stephen Mbide, who is in downtown Kampala, ready to talk to some of the citizens on whether or not they were able to receive the campaign message of their pres uh, favorite presidential candidate. Was it possible in the midst of the intimidations and uh, so many of the curtailments by members of the security? Stephen Mbide, a very good morning. What are the people saying? Yes, Monty, you Romeo Busiku is right here downtown in the city centre Kampala. I'm just standing at the bend of ben Benchwanuka Street and uh, this side of Namibia Road. But the mood here is so uh, so calm. Uh, people are just going by their businesses and others are just already uh, heading towards tax parks and bus parks. I've been to Namaiba bus park and Kisenji bus park as well as the old and new tax parks and many people there are boarding buses taxis uh, to uh, country areas too and some are saying they're heading towards uh, those areas to participate in the vote i've been to chiseka market Chiseka market is calm also as uh, some people have already opened their shops and the security is not so tight there at least a few uh, police and military officers there are patrolling the city but in the city center you see that uh, no other candidate has posters pinned up apart from the one of NRM, that is none other than Yorika Kutam 7. And people are just doing their business. I'm here to understand how people are feeling about the mood within the city and how people are ready for tomorrow's election and what they have, how they've seen these campaigns, the two months of campaigns we've been through. Uh, this, let me begin with you. Good morning to you. Morning, sir. How are you? Fine. And your name? Pandera Matia. Mm. How have you seen these two months of campaigns and how are you ready for tomorrow? Uh, first of all, for us, we are very ready. We have got our voters' card location slips, and we are waiting for tomorrow. How have you seen the two months of campaign? How, what has stood out for you? What, has, what have you missed? What, have, what, do, how, what would you say about these two months of campaigns? Uh, of course, we, first of all, what we have missed is the presidential campaign which they had promised us. We, we love to see them. The presidential debate? The presidential debate. We, we love to see them sitting together, answering each other, and telling Ugandans what they are going to do for them. Okay. Any other thing that you think you have stood out for you? Uh, of course, it has gas. It has been everywhere, especially on the side of opposition. It has been so much. I wish you well tomorrow, and let me speak to someone else here. How are you? Ogamo Tasevo. Ndegulon Tasevo. Amazina Gawe. Amazina Gawe, you know what I'm saying? What is it? 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 A campaign, a campaign is what is the average job. I want to what is the science in you. A road, a car restaurant is a COVID 19. A banana restaurant, I'm a in Avana Uganda, when it's a very unusual character, 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 it's a very unusual Uganda <laughs> Abakulu abo abebi okweri nda baku mabo tebe nkevu. Ilaba okusingira dala baku mafe. 
Na yenze chemanyi fengaba na Uganda. Betuwe taga mirembe. Kibango okulonde bwa okulonda. Okulonde bwa kuno kwa teke bwa u. Chite geza kwa leta. Emire, kwa chite, kwa sibu au fena kifuno uwe kanyangaba nansi. Okusobolo okulonda omukule mbeze kwe tukiririzamu. Bulichisanja, bulichisanja. So no recho se, ngaba kuruwe, nze ngaba kule, ngaba tu, nze nganze, atuwa levi okweri nda kuchalo chino chekuma, sauri yako bibide jimuchikungu. Haba tuuze bangi, mbagamba, mbagamba, bagume, sechulite, eritaiti, erevi okweri nda vyanyeze tuwa, na yemba kubirizo kulonda, bagende balonde, umukule mbeze wabuguba uri ya gubakirizamu, anaba rete, ana rete mirembe. Amanya ne dobozi These are some of the voices from the ground here coming to you live on Morning at NTV. Stephen Ibidon Fepes Wech who have been here inspecting and looking at the situation on the ground, taking you back to Romeo Busiku who is there in the studios and of course we shall be relaying everything as it happens in these uh, Thursdays for elections. Keep it here on Morning at NTV. Thank you very much, Stephen Mbide. He was talking to some citizens, giving us their two cents on uh, the just concluded uh, electoral campaigns that ended yesterday and what and how prepared they are to cast their vote on Thursday tomorrow as the country goes to the polls to elect its presidential and parliamentary representatives in that regard. I still do have Dr. Miriam Matembe, the former Ethics and Integrity Minister, also the former woman MP Mbarere. She's also tussling to represent the elderly in this election. Uh, okay, we also do have uh, Charity Ahimbe with the Executive Director of Citizens Coalition and Electoral Democracy. Let's talk about the internet shutdown, the intimidations, uh, people disappearing, being arrested without being tried. We've seen 200 noob supporters, Dr. Miriam Matembe, being arrested. Some of them have been released on bail. Others have been going to be held until January 19th. Patrick Amorito Boy has been arrested 10 times on the campaign trail, tried three times. Now, when you promulgated the 1995 constitution, is this what you envision to be the end result? A country that doesn't run on constitutionalism, but rather perceived rule of law. By the way, I told you mm. that for me, the constitution which I made mm. is not the constitution which is operating. Mm -hmm. And even that the one which should operate, which they made and it is supposed to operate, mm -hmm generally is not operating. Mm. I have said it clearly here that for me, what I see eh, is not elections. Mm. For me, what I see is a war. Mm -hmm. And this war is basically between President <laughs> Museveni and, and Chagurani. Mm -hmm. Although others are also there, mm -hmm. but this is where the war is. Because every time I've listened to President mm -hmm. Museveni, even on the other interview, with this Muzungu mm. woman. I see. The issue is Chaogurani, this boy Chaogurani, this Chaogurani, this Chaogurani. So there is a war between the current government and Chaogurani. This is what I see. I, why do I talk like this? I mean, I was a politician hmm, for 20 good years. And by the way, you say former member, former mm. what? I'm mm. also former member of Pan-African Parliament. Indeed. So I can work, talk from a perspective of African. Mm. It is so painful how African leaders are treating their people. What do you make of it, this it internet is, shutdown? It, it is mm. so painful. Mm. You see, you, you were talking of the constitution mm. and so on. <laughs> I, of course, internet shutdown mm. is terrible. I mean, and I listened to President Museveni. He, he was saying the reason why his internet shutdown is because it is against his government, it is not bad. I listened to him one time saying that I know people are going to reach elections. I have never <laughs> known a sitting government whose elections are rigid. You, you know, this mm. kind of things show fear. Mm. There is fear for losing power. Mm. And yet you have seen that the people are saying that uh, President NRIM is, 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 is what has the majority. Mm. Then I ask myself, if this is what the predictions are saying, mm. why fear? Why the, the government is so scared, is so scared of losing the, the power. The people are so scared because they, 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 they are, the, the, the military, the security is directed towards them. So the other time, the other side there is scare, on this side there is scare, and there is this war which is between 
Chagurani and President Let Museveni. me also bring in Charity Ahimbisi with the Executive Director for the Citizens Coalition on Electoral Democracy. Charity, give us your two cents as we wrap up on the internet shutdown. Oh. What do you make of it? Uh, um, in a state of democracy, and I think that one of the things we think about elections are a hallmark of democracy. They help us to gauge the rate at which the democracy is growing or declining. Now, media and the freedom to internet or the internet freedom are one of those precursors that we use to judge whether a democracy is going forward or it's going backwards. So when we see these shutdowns, like we also saw in 2016, it's not new. Ugandans had expected that it was going to happen. And I think two, three weeks before, they started downloading VPN and uh, preparing for the mm -hmm. shutdown. It is disruptive. Uh, and I think that uh, in a democratic state, it should have been left for people to express themselves because the article of uh, the Constitution 29 says you have your right to freedom of expression and opinion. And this has been one avenue where they've been expressing their opinion from. Mm. But if you look broadly at uh, the world level, China does a lot of that. They, mm. they shut down internet, and, but they have their own mechanism of managing processes. I, I think now, they don't, China doesn't hide it. They, they the claim to be authoritarian. They don't hide it in but, plain but, sight. But, but yeah, mm. th these days they have started to pretend that they want to have a bit of leeway for people to speak. Anyway, Until Romeo, the are free, I don't think the, <laughs> the, 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 the bigger that. issue yes. to think mm. about, even beyond mm. the election, mm. because it's going to be conducted and it's going to end mm. and we shall still be here. But, and but it's even our before country. beyond the elections, Charity, there is something that is really important. Mm. Uh, help us understand the implications of the absence of the local observer missions, just like SEDU in if, this election. If the local observer will not be there in the election, it's going to be an indictment on government. I see. I will tell you that Burundi conducted an election without local observers and without international observers. When the international observers came, they told them we are putting you in quarantine because of COVID-19. Now, the local observers, they also accredited just a small bit. All the reports that have been written about that Burundi election mm. have indicated that there was no objective mm. opinion which means they cannot discuss growing of the democracy. Mm. So to be able to talk about Uganda's democracy and growth, it is important. The local observer is accredited and is at the polling stations. Charita Himbisiwe is Executive Director for the Citizens Coalition for the Electoral Democracy. She's here with her boss, the Chair of the Board on the Citizens, Ele uh, Citizens Coalition and Electoral De Democracy, that is Dr. Miriam Matembe. She's also the former um, Ethics and Integrity Minister, also former mini uh, woman MP for Mbarara. She's also vying, you're also vying for <laughs> to represent the elderly in this country.